told me this is a talk. <laughs> so I was explaining that I started sketching the sun through solar telescopes, like the one over there, the smallest one here on the lot today, the solar telescope. And you can actually see the sun in there during the day, and it looks like this when you look at it. You can see what it looks like, oh, have like, you ever seen like iron shavings put on a piece of paper and it's like a magnet or anything you see the patterns of the iron shavings? That's one of the things that I'm looking for. That's what the sun's surface looks like in the solar telescope. It's got this activity going on. It's hydrogen gases being controlled by electromagnetic energy. There's a tremendous amount of mass. Here. And the sun is literally millions of times bigger than the Earth. The Earth would be smaller than this big sunspot that was on the surface that day. And I can carry a spare battery. Yeah. And you get a close-up of the sunspot. Anyway, so I start sketching the sun and then the solar sunspot matches the period end in about 2000. And then I eventually turn to the moon and sketch the moon. Um, it depends. So galaxies generally. But uh, uh, I could even go back further in time here before the, the, the astronomy sketches because I have to be in the portfolio of that. But, uh, I was doing, uh, it was probably one of my favorite ones of the room. It took about four hours one night. Those actually look like a box. Yeah, I remember I'm looking like this for the eyepiece, the telescope. And the left hand is over here at the chalk on the table. I'm sitting and looking like this. And thousands of times in four hours, your hand is moving, looking at the eyepiece, and one eye over here on the paper on the table. So it takes, it's not exactly perfect as a photograph could be. Made. I got all the craters you can see that I have a three quarter phase, and the most interesting feature is Sinus Urza, or Bay of Rainbows, off in the darkness, it hangs there. In a few more nights, you'll see it if you look up at the moon with the rock, you can see this. Not quite with the naked eye. It's best for a telescope up close to see it here. But then, uh, going back to quite some earlier works here, I'm not sure it's going to come up because I don't have this in any particular order. Um, really college work. That's not a drawing, it's actually transfers of eight with cutouts out of magazines. And, um, nothing to do with astronomy. Um, it was done for an art project. Usually I would suggest yes. Yeah, I think Einstein's in there. There's a lot of people in there. I was mimicking the, the Beatles album cover, Sgt. Pepper's, all the crowd. And they're all cutouts, ink transfers out of magazines. An artist named Robert Rauschenberg did this in the 60s. They transferred. Famous pictures out of magazines. And, uh, train, he showed Andy Warhol how to do this. Yeah, these are prints of the same ones in prints. The one you know, just looked at, there's a print of it. Um, maybe I'll give this away to have somebody wants for a similar print. I was sketching with Penn and in high school in magazines like this, out of photographs. And uh, again, these took like maybe a few hours to do each one. And then I was doing pencil drawings and calls and like photographs. A water drop in the tree branch. Once it gets darker, eggs in a jar. Or an artist, art teacher, my mentor, set this up. We have a sketch of all. It probably took me three days to do that. So if you look through this one, I think, I think he has a lot of there. Uh, yeah, we'll have to go compare that. Lots of similar to a crumpled paper bag. These hey, are very Stan? detailed. Oh, we'll so, yeah, there's no amount of a magazine to sketch when I was about 16. The pen and but, so this kind of stuff is what led me up to doing the astronomy art today. Here's like a wall, five-step end process, squidgy pull through, put a six screens. It's, Again, nothing related to the astronomy art today. This all came about in recent years. And uh, see if I can just just on this up for you here. I'm just curious. It might have shut off for all I know. I guess it's still rolling. Well, I don't know if anybody's going to tolerate listening to me talk for 16 minutes, but there it is. So uh, I can't quite get the light. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. That's a great. Could you hold that up? Could you hold that up about right about where this lady's standing, but right here? Midway, right in front of the camera, let people see that. Like, Ooh. put it right in front of my sketch, but closer to me. Actually, closer this way. I just want people to see that. Let's see if I can a little closer, come up to the camera here. This gentleman just took a shot with his, it's a large Android, I guess. And hold it real still, and I'm gonna tone down the light. You can come closer yet. And I'm gonna focus. new LGs. Yeah, it's really great. I'm gonna focus it. Even though the color is a little off, but it's amazing. Keep coming a little bit closer. This is taken with an LG. This is the LG G5. Yeah, I had an LG Optimus 5 a couple years ago. I have a Windows micro soft phone now, but that's amazing detail with a cell phone over a 12-inch uh, Dobsonian telescope eyepiece. That's beautiful. 
Yeah, you should get Jupiter and its moons if you could do that too. That's great, thank you. It took a while to... I, the camera's off-center. So oh yeah, yeah. It's amazing what the technology can do today. I mean, the fact that I would be taking a film like this for people to watch and to put it up on YouTube later. And uh, although I should have upped my ISO speed here, it's really dim. And uh, yeah, see that's all I'm going to do right now. But I'm Tess isn't really working. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So we'll cut it here. That's probably enough of me talking about my art.